Okay guys, today we're gonna take some more parts off of my Jeep. We've already ransacked a few parts from the rear end. Now I believe we're gonna take some stuff off the front end. This is a 86 Jeep Grand Wagoneer. It's only got about 80,000 miles on it. Still got the original fog lights. It is spring over axle on the front and shackle flip in the rear. Okay, so this is a kind of a detailed setup on the front of my 86 Grand Wagoneer uh, spring over. Originally the axle was on top of the springs, uh, new U-bolts, everything, brake hose, steering used to go here. Now I sent the knuckles off to get milled and drilled and tapped, put a spacer on there, put this arm stud kit. Now it gets your drag link and your tie rod up above the springs out of the way and that way they're horizontal if you still ran crossover steering with a spring over your steering would, would start down here and have to travel up you could run a drop pitman arm and get it horizontal that way but the results usually aren't as good as this This is going to be a step-by-step -step instruction on how to take the knuckles off of a Dana 44. This is on an 86 Jeep Grand Wagoneer that's been modified for high steer. First, we got to take the axle cap off. Axle cap off with a hammer and a chisel. All you do is tap it right there on the edges, walk it out. Next, we have a snap ring to get out and we'll be using a snap ring pliers and a screwdriver. Okay, if everything goes according to plan, as soon as you take that snap ring off, this hub will shoot out because it's spring loaded. Next, we have a notched locking nut in there. It's got four places where a socket will go in there. Well, I don't have my socket with me, so we'll improvise. Once you knock the locking nut loose with a screwdriver or a, either a screwdriver or a chisel and a hammer, whatever you can get in there. Just line the nut off. Like so. Now there is a washer in there. And the grease always has it stuck in place. It can't turn because it has a tab that aligns with the keyway. So what you do is you take your 90 degree snapping pliers, get one corner in there, and pull, run it around, pull, and back around, pull. And then it comes out. Now, there is another locking nut in there. Sometimes you can just pop this out with a screwdriver like this. And then line it out. So, and set that to the side. Now all that's left is the bearing and a little warm out. Easy. Next, we need to take the caliper off. And it's these two bolts right here, 3 8 Allen headed. And once we get this caliper off, the rotor and hub, outer hub assembly will slide right off.
Okay, I got the front hub off. It starts, you take that snap ring off the end of that shaft. Then that slides out. And then down in there is a nut. You can get it off with a hammer and chisel. And the hardest part, honestly, is getting that washer out. If you don't have a pick, you can use your snap ring pliers if you have the 90 degree snap, snap ring pliers. And then another nut. You can get that off with a hammer and chisel and then your hub will slide out and next we'll take the six hub bolts off quick tour of the facilities there's a old j10 with a rhino conversion Old 401, picked it up at a deal. 208 needs a little bit of work, picked that up for the deal. And uh, Dana 60 Snow Fighter, Kingpin, heavy duty, yada yada yada. It bolts right in to the Jeep. There's a 360 out of a late model Grand Wag. As you can see, it uh, spun rod, broke it. Uh, there's my hot rod back in the day, LSB Tech. And here's an early 60s cab, or mid 60s rather, small back glass. A little bit beat up. That is the factory radio, possibly. Was a stick shift truck. Still got the gas pedal. Minus some floorboards. That, I believe, is the breather off of my dad's Jeepster Commando when it had the original 225. Outer hub assembly off, everything, the seal and the inner bearing come out all together, which is um, actually pretty good. Next, we have the six. A dead spider. The six bolts right here, they're fine thread. These nuts gotta come off. They are 3 8 so it'll be a 9 16 socket. There's six of them. And then you have to get this 3 8 headed screw out that holds the rest of the backing plate on. Six nuts off and the one screw, and we were able to beat and pry the spindle off. Next is the upper ball joint nut. It was an inch and five sixteenths socket. There's a cotter pin you gotta take out first. The bottom one is an inch and an eighth socket. A quick note, your upper ball joint, when you get them, if they come with a grease fitting, you're gonna have to do something different because the grease fitting hangs down so low that the axle will hit.